Hi, my name's Phil, and welcome to episode 20 of Reviving Jabiru. In the last episode, we saw the boat being turned over. The next step now is to remove the wheels and then lower the hull down so that the shear line is as close to the ground as possible. This will make it easier to work on. As you can see, it needs to be lowered by about a metre, a little bit over three feet. This makes for some very tall stacks of wooden blocks to begin with. I used a single jack at the centre line at each end in turn and gradually got it closer to the ground. Eventually I had to dig a hole in the ground for that Samson post to go into uh, when, as about the boat got lower and lower, so it's, uh, it's ended up about a um, 100 millimetre deep hole. There's still a lot of pitch on the underside of the hull planking and the dead wood, and this has to be removed before the fairing process can begin as it does a great job of clogging up sanding discs and also plane blades. I tried burning off some of the pitch and this section here from the tools down to where I am took me over an hour. So uh, I'm planning to spline the hull first and then after the, the splines are planed down to the surface I'll then uh, attack the pitch. Probably from what I've found with the burning off I'll do it with the sander and just sacrifice a few discs to the cores. Before the splining can be done the corking, the oakum and cotton, whatever it's been done with, I think it's mostly oakum, and also the putty from the seams needs to be removed. Um, this method, I used a small chisel and a bar to lever on, and it seemed to work well. It got the corking out very nicely. Where the seams between the planks were narrow enough, I used a router with a small cutter running against a batten fixed parallel to the seam. For planks with a wider gap, I used this grinder with two diamond wheels side by side and a sturdy base plate to set the depth of the cut, and also added a handle to control it better. It's shown here being used with a guide batten in place, but for the most part the grinder was used freehand and that seemed to work well enough. I used masking tape on both sides of each seam to keep most of the glue off the planking surface. This was removed after the splines were glued in place but before the glue had hardened and made cleaning up very much easier. It's 
time to introduce my latest helper. His name is Joss and he's my grandson. I think he really just wants to be on the videos, I'm not sure, but you never know, he might end up being a boat builder one day. splines and fared the top sides in a, a few episodes ago. I used my old uh, wooden jack plane to take these off. Since I've done the rest of the uh, splines I thought gee there's a lot of work there so I've just decided that I'll uh, use a router this time. So I've got that uh, two blocks so there's a slot between. The router blade is just level with the bottom of those blocks so when I put it on here the router blade will want to cut it down right to the level of the uh, join in the planking um, and there'll be hardly any left to take off afterwards so uh, that's what I'm doing Now that the splines are all fitted, I can sand the rest of the hull to get rid of the pitch. This is not a fairing process, this is just to remove the uh, surface back to bare wood so that the epoxy will stick better. Well as you can see, this is about as dirty as this job can get. Um, really need a shower after this one.
now the um, splines are all been sanded back to the surface of the planking, you can get a fair idea of just how smooth and fair this hull is. It actually doesn't look bad and those splines serve as a set, a set of lines that you can actually see whether you've got bumps in the hull or not. And we have got a bump in the hull. It's on this side, the starboard side, and it's where an old floor had been bolted down, just here, and it's put, I think, I'm not sure if that's it. No, it's not. That's, uh, that's relatively smooth there, a few bumps. But further down here, further down here, there's a depression in the boat, which you can see in line with that there. I've started to plane it smooth so I can glue a patch on and then fare that in. But there's too much there to take off the surrounding uh, thickness of the planking because we, we've only got a little bit over three quarters of an inch, 20 millimetres to begin with. And that's, you can see the size of my thumb, that's a piece that was taken out where the bow thruster hole was. So that's the thickness of the planking. Not very thick. Thick enough, but not thick, not too thick. So I'm going to go over and have a look. There's a few other depressions where there are bolts into uh, the stringers and some of the floors. So this is the worst one on the boat. So I'm gonna, I'm going to do that one, glue a patch on there and then fair it off later on. But as for the rest of it, it all looks pretty good. It'll all smooth up nicely. There's quite a few bumps in the transverse direction, but uh, there's no real flat spots. There, oh well, I shouldn't, I shouldn't say that. There are a few flat spots, but they're small enough to not be concerned about. So uh, there's a definite flat on the top sides, but that seems to be a design feature in this area here. It's definitely a, a flat side. So rather than a, uh, a nice curve to the bilge, there's sort of a flat and then a bit of a bend about here. But I guess that's the way it is. The rest of the boat looks pretty straight, so I'm happy. So I'll just glue that one patch on on the uh, starboard side, near down the aft.
Now above the water line, which is, where is the water line? About here, roughly. Um, I'm trying to get most of the bumps out. But this will end up having three layers of 600 gram uh, black seal cloth uh, in epoxy resin. So there'll be about every 400 millimeters, there'll be overlaps. Um, which uh, will make the surface pretty bumpy anyway. So a lot of this uh, fairing will be done with uh, fairing filler after the glass is on. So I'm knocking the main bumps off the uh, top sides. But under the waterline, I'm not worrying too much at all. I'll give it a little bit, but um, take the, the really take the tops of the mountains off, so to speak. Um, but I won't try and fair it as if I'm gonna paint the whole thing because I'm not. So um, it'll be good to get it done. I've done about an eighth of the hull. So I've got a little bit of planning to do. Probably won't show you all of that because it'll just be a bit boring. But I'll keep going for today and that'll probably be all that I'll video. Well, that's it for episode 20. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, next episode, we'll deal with probably puttying up the hull and preparing for that first coat of epoxy prior to putting the glass on. So uh, it's starting to feel like there's a little bit of progress now. So uh, I'm smiling. Thanks for watching. Bye.